of a blurb about who you are. Well, you sent me this, but I'm just gonna read it out. Um, it's very interesting because you have a pretty um, unconventional background, almost like a almost rebellious, in my opinion. Um, yeah. So right now you're 24 years old. Um, you were a university dropout. You worked at uh, two YC companies back home, and even been part of a, a cohort from Antler. Um, and some of the fun facts about you, so you, you got a uh, zero in the uh, JEE exam, which I had to look up. So apparently the JEE exam is literally like the exam to like determine your engineering career as a student, right? Yeah. In India. Yeah. So the most important exam in your schooling years. And you got a zero in that. I don't know if, if it's on purpose or what happened. So you got to tell me about that laughter. Um, and second thing is you learned programming in two months to build your own app um and then you know your journey kind of starts from there as in, in terms of like uh programming so um that's the, that's why i know about you um welcome to the webinar and you want to tell us a little bit about yourself maybe fill in the gaps here and there yeah uh sure uh so uh as after, uh, you have actually read out most of the things uh about me i'll say uh, building in public, as I was saying, is one of the greatest things I actually believe uh, is really helpful. Like uh, how many people can actually uh, help you out? Uh, the people you get introduced to, a uh, lot of people actually like uh, encourage you and a lot more things happen. Uh, so I'm actually interested in building in uh, public, building in open source and all of these communities. Uh, sharing this uh, small project on Reddit actually uh, got me so much traction and so many people actually DM me. Uh, a lot of investors also <laughs> actually DM me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the product was not ready. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So I found your project and I'm like, yeah, a lot of, a lot of like the details about it, I, I do want in my own product as well. So like, let me just hit up this guy, pick his brain, because perplexity is something that people are saying that could replace Google, right? Like now I use perplexity pretty often. I would have a question. If I need up-to-date response, I would go on perplexity. So is that has been the case for you as well? Actually not. <laughs> okay. All right. Tell me about it. How, why do you think you, you can go a better perplexity if you don't even use okay. it? Uh, okay. 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 So uh, I'll be uh, very brutally honest. Like this is being recorded. Uh, I don't know. It will be uh, something that I have to like have repercussions later, but I'll say it outright. Uh, I saw Arvind and how he was building and promoting Publicity. And I'll be honest with this, uh, the product that he built, uh, the product has a great idea. When ChatGPT first launched, uh, it had two problems. One is it had hallucinations and the data was never up to date. So he fixed both of these problems with a great UI. And that is something I'll give props to him. And he deserves all this recognition and all of this. But uh, one of the things that uh, I don't actually like around Arvind and Publicity would be uh, how much he is actually promoting it and how much he is saying like he will be replacing Google. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure this is not going to happen. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, the product has some uh, qualities that actually people uh, want. So yeah, that is something. <laughs> So yeah, I like the idea that you said, which is, it's it's just a really good user interface for knowledge uh, queries. And I find myself um, trying to replicate that in my own product as well. And I don't know why. So from your perspective, when you tried it, what is it about the UI that is so like different from like other chat interfaces out there? Uh, so uh, around this, uh, in my own perspective, what I saw was basically the answering part. One of the core problem statements uh, that uh, Publixity actually figured it out was when you have a question, a genuine question, and uh, you want the answer straight out. So uh, you search it up in Google, and uh, Google will give you all the web search results. They have started generating all this uh, generative answers and all of this. But before, it was not that case. And it you have to go through each and every one of them. You have to click on all these spams, all these ads. You have to find this yourself. Uh, but with all these products that are being built, you can get to the answer just like that. That is much more time saving. And you can actually ask uh, further more questions uh, around that. 
so that is actually uh, something very interesting to me yeah all right sounds good um so you built an open source version of this um what were some of the things that you wanted this to do and why do you do you think this will be super useful for most people i find it useful because you know it's it's just a better way to to query knowledge so from your perspective why is it useful uh in my perspective uh, it's actually useful um i think uh the uh llms that are being built right now i don't know uh what you're actually going to win it might be claude it might be gemini it might be chargebit itself and all of these guys uh but uh, this has given us a paradigm shift in how we think around it like uh how assistance works and can assistants actually do much more task than just answering questions and this has been uh, really being done by uh, function calling and all of these things and uh, this is uh, something actually interesting so what my uh, thoughts around this was uh, right now one of the use cases we found was uh, answering like uh, search or, uh, search it in google or bing or any of this uh, web search engines scrape all this data and answer my questions uh, that is much more faster uh, but what about some of the more actions uh, that uh, ChatGPT was trying to solve with uh, plugins? Uh, like next time you want to uh, search it up on Google for flight data, Google might show you some widgets around uh, which flights to take, which are the cheapest. Same thing with hotels, calculators, and a lot of more things. These are called uh, Google search experiences. And uh, I think uh, this can also be built uh, around these products. And you don't have to just go in there, check all the prices. You can just ask uh, the LLM that uh, go around, find me the best hotel prices for this to this state uh, in this area. And it will actually give you all the summaries and all the actions you have to take. And that is something very powerful. All right. Um, I think I'm ready for a demo. Do you have a demo for us? Yeah, sure. This is the uh, local version, uh, the normal version. So <laughs> as you can see, uh, where knowledge evolves rather than begins. So we have the same options like, uh, do you want to search all the web? Uh, do you want to just search academics like Axiv, writing mode? I have added Stack Overflow actually. This is much more useful. <laughs> uh, Reddit is there, YouTube is there. So I can just ask it uh, like, uh, Microsoft Copilot uh, ban in Senate, I guess. You heard the news? I have, yeah. Apparently, yeah. not to use any of this. So, uh, yeah, you can see here. So, we g gave it the query. Uh, it uh, got into Bing, uh, did a search. Uh, the search results actually gives you 10. Uh, web links, I guess. Uh, I just took the three for now. And we scraped through all of this. And uh, according to this question, it just uh, generated this answer. And you can also give the same citations here. If you click on it, it will actually take you to the website. You can even go from here if you want to just uh, check on what is happening or what is not. <laughs> As I said, man. Well, you are a robot. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, that is something actually useful. But uh, even after that, if you uh, like want to share it, uh, so this is something I'm actually building just before this call. Uh, can you see this thing? Yeah, I see a nice open graph, almost like kind of like a preview. So yeah, yeah. so uh, that is one of the ideas. Like right now, if you want to share your uh, chat GPT uh, links to your friends or any social media, it just shows you chat GPT. Same thing, I guess, with perplexity also. But I believe this uh, preview should be much more helpful. Like right now, you can see the date, uh, the time you would take to read this, and the main question that is going to be uh, around it. And you can ask even more, like uh, OpenAI, Microsoft, Target <laughs> project. I actually don't know about this one, so I'm curious what this is. So, yeah, I guess it broke the formatting right now. So, um, kind of walk me through uh, why why did you choose Bing instead of like SERP or API or like Google? Uh, this is actually because I think uh, Bing API has some of the best. What do you say? 
uh, APIs right now. And I can actually show it around to you. Uh, see, uh, Bing Web Search API, they have their own image search and all of these tools. And uh, these are much more helpful. Like This is a web search. Uh, this is much more computational. We don't use it right now. And related search is also there. So uh, by the way, I am pretty sure Publixity also uses uh, Bing itself. And I also actually have a credits from Azure. <laughs> so some of the main decision drivers. And by the way, uh, like any, this is, yeah. Like any good startup, you have uh, Azure credits. You got to yeah. use it. Yeah, uh, just uh, before this call, I actually uh, searched it up. So this is Arvind himself. And during his first, uh, what do you say, launch of Publixity, he even says it, a web search powered by GPT and Bing. So yeah, they're also using the same tech. Uh, this is much more useful. Yeah. I wonder if uh, DuckDuckGo API would be in the same tier or maybe less. Uh, just to be clear, DuckDuckGo uses Bing as well. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. OK. OK, so that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Uh, do you want to see uh, much more features? Let me, uh, by the way, uh, give you a walkthrough of uh, the rest of this, uh, uh, what do you say, UI also. Uh, this is the sidebar, as you can see. Uh, this and it still needs to be worked on. But uh, this is supposed to be all of your chat history. Here you can see all the documents history if you want to uh, like upload your documents and everything, and you can even delete that. Uh, this is something of the settings that I'm actually building. So uh, you can actually go around and change uh, the model you want to like uh, ask this questions with. So sometimes uh, for basis, I'm using GPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, but if you want to uh, like use even the better versions, it will actually give you better answers. You can actually change around uh, temperature, maximum token limits, and all the other, like even custom prompts. So this is something uh, that is actually uh, supposed to be helpful. Plugins, as I said, uh, plugins is basically that part of widgets. Like uh, dev developers should be able to build their own plugins. So like next time you ask a certain type of question, a widget would uh, set active, and it could actually do a task. So uh, this is just the sidebar. And uh, as I showed you, uh, this is just the focus mode and everything. And I also have, yeah, uh, image search capacity. So, so what happened when you uh, upload a file? What does that do? Yeah, so I'm just giving you a demo. So this is a screenshot of an email from my Stripe account, I guess. Uh, they shut it down for some reason. So I have uploaded this uh, image. Now I'm going to ask you, uh, what is in this image? Let's hope it works. So I guess this one will hop into the multimodal channel. Yeah, yeah. Parse text. Yeah, uh, when uh, you upload any image or any of the files, it actually switches over to uh, GPT uh, 4V. Uh, for the vision APIs, and it then can actually uh, understand like uh, what's within this image. And that's not supposed to happen. But yeah, uh, as I was saying, you can even ask uh, much more. Uh, tell me more. Yeah, so uh, you can actually uh, keep talking about uh, what's in this file, how it can be helpful, and all these actions. And all of this actually adds up. So uh, that is the overall app uh, right now that I have. Uh, now, what more do you want to say about it? Yeah, so this is what I always ask people. Uh, what was something that was surprisingly easy for you to build, and what was something that was surprisingly difficult to build? OK. so. This is just the uh, modified version, but uh, this is something that you might have seen. Uh, this was the uh, V1 version of this, and uh, I built it up in three days, actually. The first version, I built it up in three days. Uh, this was the easiest part of uh, like integrating, uh, how do I say, being API results and uh, prompt engineering, all of this, uh, to chat GPT and all of this. Uh, the hardest part was actually scraping. Uh, so I'll tell you something. Uh, I had to build my own scraper. Uh, I'll actually give you a, yeah, I have this. 
So uh, this is just an example API. So think about it. Uh, this is using my own scraper that is based around HTTP scraping. So if you give it uh, some uh, URLs like uh, example.com or google.com, it will actually go around and just do it much faster. And this is a uh, local uh, multi-scrape and it is using Puppeteer. So it takes a bit more time for the same search results. <laughs> so, so when you scrape this, it seems like um, most of the formatting is gone, right? It's just the details in the middle. Yeah, that is uh, what is happening. So you have to actually uh, clear up all this data also. So uh, I'll give you a much more uh, better version of this with this code. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the first version that I built. So let me show you how everything is working. Uh, so this is the uh, local multi-scraper. As you can see, I'm using Puppeteer here. And I have to uh, give this uh, directions, like uh, just uh, taking all this text from uh, this websites and just give it to me. And it actually takes a bit of time because uh, in the server, you have to just start up a puppeteer and give it all the URLs and everything. Uh, actually, uh, I even tried Bright Data and some of the other proxy services because uh, with a, a puppeteer, I was just getting blocked. Uh, some of these websites, even uh, Google search index, I guess, uh, they thought that uh, I was doing some shady things. So they blocked my website itself. So it was a huge hassle. I asked around in the uh, subreddits for web scraping. And some of these guys actually told me, like, oh, why don't you just uh, query for the index uh, dot HTML? You will get all the first uh, HTML text and everything. And then you can just uh, clear it uh, from all the set divs and all these classes. Just get your text content. So this is just a sample. Uh, this is the uh, scraping system. I'm getting the HTML here. And then it's just uh, removing all this data, HTML tags, HTML entities, white spaces. Uh, all these other informations. <laughs> so uh, this is much more helpful. Like I will tell you, uh, this is the best thing actually that happened within this whole project. This reduced uh, like the scraping time from thirty seconds to a uh, three seconds max. Okay, um, I I resonate with that because I actually built like a a web scraping kind of like open source project like last year. And I would go to a website, maybe like Wall Street Journal, and then scrape the whole thing and then pass it into to a, an LLM and then do like entity extraction. So I'd be like, okay, here's my Pydentic class of like, I just want a news article name, news article description, news article content in the LLM. Just try extract for me all these things using LLM. So it kind of worked, but it was so expensive because there's so much junk in the HTML that you get back. And then what I did was I try to be smart. So I'm like, okay, so what do ads look like? Let me try to target those, those tags and tick them out. But it's just so much junk in there. So I'm really curious about people, how people scrape. And it seems like you, you mentioned that was one of the most difficult things, right? And websites, they don't want you to scrape. Um, so I think what I did was I, I try to use Chromium. Like I had to like spin up a Chromium instance to like pretend it's a browser but it's so hardware intensive. So in your case, can you scrape any website or is there like a few that okay. like you can never do because of their robots.txt? I, I'll tell you, I, I, I'll just show you. This is the funniest thing that has <laughs> happened to me. So you see how Reddit is uh, doing with all this data scraping and data sharing, right? So I'll tell yeah. you, Reddit is one of these guys. <laughs> they are just making fun of all these guys. Uh, so uh, this is my uh, local scraper that is using Puppeteer. And in a way, actually, it is a basically a Chromium, but a stripped down version. So uh, like, what can I think of? Uh, I'll just Google it. Take this and I'll just ask this. Okay, uh, can you see uh, what's it's written here? Website data. Yeah, Whoa, yeah. Partner. <laughs> you yeah, request this. Knows. Yeah, uh, try logging in or creating an account and all of these things because Reddit is 
actually like the hardest in all of this. So let me try my own scraper right now. And this actually works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so oh. you see, yeah, it actually got all this data out. So that is something actually fun. So how is it different from the other scraper? So uh, how do I explain this? Uh, this scraper is based around just the simple idea that I don't need all these resources. So when a website is uh, being requested, it will request the index HTML file. It will request some of these JavaScripts, the images, the fonts, and all of these things. So loading all of these things and building the website in itself is a long process. So uh, the idea is just take out the HTML file. It will have most of the text, and I only need the text. So uh, I just do that. So uh, this actually is the most time saver. Another example I'll give you right now is, uh, have you ever wondered like how these focus modes are working? I have no idea. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> OK, uh, so uh, have you heard about uh, Google Docs? Of course. So uh, basically, uh, when you search in Google, you just have to write site. Uh, oh, OK, rate. so it's like a string thing. Yeah. So uh, whenever, uh, yeah, whatever you write next, it will just give you the results for uh, Reddit.com or some of these websites. So it's just uh, docking for YouTube. I'm just using uh, site uh, YouTube.com, Reddit.com, Stack Overflow, Axiv.org, and all of this. Writing mode is just uh, a disabled search by itself. <laughs> that is awesome. I actually have no idea how that works. But it's just as simple as like inserting that in the the query, right? Yeah. So that is uh, see. Yeah, you have seen all these projects, like how it's being built and how everything works, right? Uh, I'm just still curious, man. Uh, I've been okay. just <laughs> so I got a question for you. Um, it seems like this project blew up, right? Um, do you have any long-term plans for it? Right now, you're yeah. still developing on it actively, so I, I'm assuming you do. Yeah, uh, so uh, one of the uh, core development uh, ideas that I have right now is around the plugins environment that I have in mind. So I've been uh, trying to understand how LangChain works and how function calling and all of the services can actually be intertwined. Uh, you might have uh, uh, seen another uh, cool project, a V0 from Vercel. Yeah. We're yeah. talking about uh, generative UI and all that stuff. Yeah. So I'm using uh, Vercel's AI SDK to make all these chats and streaming chats and everything. And uh, so one of the core ideas is that uh, this widgets part can only be possible if you use generative uh, UI to use on this. So whenever you ask a new question, just like in their uh, own demo, they're using RCS components to build that uh, stock market small simulator and having you all these charts and everything. Uh, this can actually be really useful. And another uh, cool thing that I'll uh, think about is actually right now you can choose the model, but I'm thinking about uh, why not the provider itself, like change from uh, OpenAI itself to just go into, uh, what do I say? Maybe Gemini, uh, maybe Claude. So uh, that is actually useful. And I'll just open source all this code. So uh, I just want to see how people react to it, what features people actually ask much more for, what features people actually, uh, like, how do I say, much more interested and intrigued by. Um, do you plan to have it so that it, you can hook it up to like a Olama or something locally to run local models? Um, I actually don't think uh, like Olama or any of these local models will actually uh, help that much. Because uh, this is not something that uh, it will work without internet by itself. You have to use uh, internet to actually get the search results. That is the prime objective here. So uh, building it with local models, it might be useful, uh, but I don't have any plans right now. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, does it use any sort of like embeddings or rack behind the scenes? Yeah, so yeah, I forgot about this. But uh, before building this entire project, I actually uh, read a lot about how rags work and how entire vector, uh, vector databases, embeddings, and all of this works. And one of the core things that I realized was uh, it takes a bit of time 
and it also is uh, it gets expensive uh, by the volume of searches and how it's everything working so it might give you better results but uh, it is not not as fast as you would think around it so it's not useful at this stage so you would stuff the entire content from the website into the context yes. window just burn yeah. your credits <laughs> Yeah, yeah, see, I have got a lot of credits right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And like, given like some models have like hundreds of thousands of tokens context window, I'm sure it, sh it shouldn't be a problem, right? Uh, yeah, it it becomes a problem. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me explain how it works. So within uh, this uh, Reddit post, I actually started giving out a small link preview. It was broken and it was like uh, the worst thing. Uh, but uh, people actually still used it. People were talking about it. There was uh, a Japanese Twitter account, I guess. He was using this entire website and recording it and posting it on Twitter. And he, uh, he was talking about how everything worked. Uh, so uh, I saw a huge spike on usage. And uh, that was like uh, my enter entire month's budget was just uh, went down in one day. <laughs> So uh, to answer this small problem, I actually thought it around like uh, I can't use like uh, the best models, 128 tokens by itself for just few searches. It's just not useful enough. So uh, what I do actually is uh, I use this uh, GPT 3.5 uh, Turbo uh, and it has a context length of, I guess, 16,000 tokens. And I have uh, I've used a package called JS Tick Token. Uh, you might know it. Uh, it just understands how many tokens are there within this uh, text part. So uh, I'm using this uh, JS tick token package to actually read all of this. I mean, all of this uh, text that I've given it, understand that uh, does it exceed the limit? If it exceeds, then it will just uh, cut it down from each website on an equal basis. Uh, so it will always be within context. So 16,000 uh, token is the max uh, support. After that, you just don't need it. Yeah, or I guess so. Right now, if it's over like say sixteen thousand, then you would just ignore the second half of it, right? But I guess you can also do it by chunk. So like, look at the first chunk and then look at the second chunk, or something like that, which at latency. Um, but that makes sense. Yeah, if you, if you max out sixteen thousand tokens every run, how much does it cost you like for like yeah. a regular search session? It is very less. I actually reduced it by huge margins. Uh, uh, regular search, uh, I'll incur like zero point zero seven dollars. Okay, and that, that how many like websites is that? Um... So uh, Bing just gives me the first ten websites for any query. First ten websites, first ten videos, first ten images. Uh, for now, I'm just using the first three websites. And I think that is uh, more than enough uh, for the simple searches. If you want to yeah. go even deeper, then you might. Uh, but uh, the three websites, uh, first of all, and just read through all of this. So Bing search costs me around $0.02. And for the entire chat GPT and all this uh, credits, it is just $0.05. So overall, it is very less. OK, so it's actually not bad. Um... Do you play and monetize this? I, th I think I saw a pro mode there. So I, I guess you do. Yeah, yeah see, uh, a lot of people, uh, I actually uh, talked around in the Reddit post itself also, that uh, I didn't get that much of any VC funding or something to actually uh, work by. So you have to monetize it. And some of these people actually came up to me and they were like, uh, open your donation box on GitHub as sponsors. And people might uh, donate. And I thought around, like, uh, rather than having donations, why? Don't I just uh, give them a subscription? So I'll have the motivation to work more and more. And I'll actually contribute to all these people that are actually paying me. And in the long term, uh, this can actually help build this entire plugin system, uh, better models, better, what do you say, providers and all of this. So this will be useful in the future. Sounds good. And do you have any uh, paying uh, customers yet? Or everyone's yeah, just. This is, not, your funds. <laughs> oh, this is not launched yet. Uh, just as I showed you, a lot of work is uh, still left to do. Uh, I'm using Firebase for now. I built everything in very small scale. Like I'm not uh, doing all of this on Dockerization and all of these things. Just use Vercel, just use Firebase, just the small things. 
when it scales it scales otherwise you just don't get deep into it uh, i have not launched it i hope when i launch uh, people will actually see the value out of it so yeah <laughs> hopefully uh, you don't get hit with the bill from Brazil and be like you have a lot of the visitors pay up <laughs> yeah uh, uh, i do get that uh, so uh, oh, i know yeah uh, so uh, i'm on the hobby project obviously and uh, they just uh, cut off the analytics and all of this parts so they'll send you a oh, congrats you have traffic but you just used all of your credits so see you next month <laughs> that's crazy man um yeah. okay so that sounds great um how do, how can people find you online uh you can actually uh, go to my website uh, bishalshaha.com that's it okay I keep building a lot of things here. you can actually try out another product i have that you can try right now is project hermes i guess this is my uh, first uh, production build what do you say app that works right now so i guess this is hermes and this is using uh, the assistance api from openai itself so think around it like this uh let me just uh, give it my credit report i hope it works <laughs> yeah something went wrong uh, i'll check it out but uh, this is a project that does the same thing uh, for what do you say same uh, assistance api and i might open source it also that's great man so it's like you're you're an ed hacker so that's that's awesome yeah <laughs> i have built like uh, six projects in six months by now uh, but yeah man uh, i have one question for you like uh, you must have been talking to a lot of people uh, within this industry and a lot of people building on open source and all of these guys so what is uh, some of the coolest uh, things that you think will actually explode in the future i thought you were going to say that the coolest shit no we we swear on the, on our webinars that's fine <laughs> um, so i think the, the the one that the one webinar that was like the most popular right now is uh, the one that we did with uh, Killian Lucas from uh, Open Interpreter so uh, for those who don't know, Open Interpreter is a uh, kind of like an open open source um, operating system for uh, hardware AI. So think human pin, um, but you know, with uh, open source like hardware and open source software. And they just came out with this thing called O1, which is the the, the entire package. So like you've got hardware you can 3D print, or you can buy from them, and the open source operating system. So that one got pretty popular, but just because of Killian and team and Open Open Interpreter. Uh, we're actually getting somebody from Open Interpreter to come to Ottawa to like do like a workshop in person next month. Um, so that's happening soon, I think. Um, other than that, um, I personally, um, in 2023 and 2022, I was building a lot of like more experimental projects. So mostly the AI agent stuff. But then now that I'm building like my own product, my interest is, has been diverting towards like, oh, how do I put this in production and make sure like the user experience is consistent. So the, the kind of guess that I put on now is, is more like, oh, four ways to like build your apps in production and do like eval, uh, which is not as exciting as before. But I guess that's just where my brain goes nowadays. It's like, oh, how do I make sure that people don't churn <laughs> when they use this? Um, but yeah, um, there are so many like different um, things that people do nowadays especially with like um visual models like um multimodal um language models um that can control computers and like they can like you know square box different parts of your screen figure out where to click based on your command um and i had this like opinion about ai agents about a year ago that was like they don't work like six it works 60 percent of the time but they don't work most of the time so i'm not gonna pay any attention to it anymore but now I'm going back and I'm like, okay, you know, the models are getting better. Um, tool usage is getting better. So maybe maybe it's the time to think about AI agents again. Um, so that's something that I'm, I'm excited about. Uh, but yeah, like all I want to do is talk to developers and tinkers and indie hackers who are building cool shit and open sourcing them. So you're one of them. So that's why we're talking today. Yeah, I'm pretty excited uh, by like, the end of this month, I hope that it would actually uh, be ready to go into production and people can actually see my bad code writing. 
oh, yeah. give some i'll give some what is the credits to claude and gpt also within the documentation <laughs> absolutely uh co-pilot um thanks for having you on man um thanks for coming on and uh i guess when when you actually launch this feel free to drop it in discord i'm sure people yes, would be interested in checking it out so sure man thanks for having me all right that's it that's the webinar